and welcome to Little Learners. I realise I haven't posted in a while and I'm really sorry about that. I've been a bit ill, but I'm here now and today I'm going to be showing you some things you can do with your children to help them with subtraction. I have posted a couple of videos in the past, one about counting and one about addition. So if you haven't looked at those, make sure to check those out. I will put them in the description box below. If you have seen the addition video, then this one will be quite similar, but obviously we'll be using those methods in a way to help children with their subtraction. Now it appears that since the dawn of time, Nine times out of 10, children find subtraction trickier than addition. There are so many theories as to why this is the case, but the one that seems to make the most sense to me is that subtraction is taking things away and you don't get to see those things anymore because they no longer exist, which is harder to get your head around than adding more things that you can physically see. So for example, in my addition video, I was showing that we could add one more and then count how many there were. However, when you take one thing away and the child can no longer see it, sometimes they get confused and think that they need to remember how many you just took away and where that thing is now. So it can take a little bit of time, but don't worry, that is completely normal. But let's take a look at a couple of things you can do to help your child with subtraction. First of all, we're going to look at one less. In the addition video, we looked at one more. Now we're going to look at one less. And this is really the basic level of where we would start when we do subtraction with children. Just looking at taking one thing away. Because this also helps children to really understand that subtraction, whatever you want to call it, minusing, subtracting, taking away, that it means taking something away. Even if you call it takeaway, they won't necessarily understand that until they've done some real activities with resources. So for this, I'm going to be using some pom-poms. You can really use whatever you like, any small toys that you have. You can use things like Smarties. You can really use things that you just have laying around the house for this. So here I have four pom-poms. I'm just going to put them in a line, doesn't matter what order they're in. And I'm just going to count how many I've got first of all. One, two, three, four. So I've got four all together. It's really important that children understand about counting before they move on to additional subtraction. Make sure to check out my counting video for more about that. Now, once we've got our four pom-poms or four items, whatever you're using, lined up and we've counted how many we've got, we're going to take away one. We're going to have one less. First of all, I, as the adult, will take one away. So I'm going to say, and I'm going to take one away. How many are there now? How many are left? I then have the child count how many are left. So one, two, three. There are three all together, so there are now three left. Once a child has got used to this kind of method, you can start talking about how you had four, you took one away, and now you've got three. So that's really kind of the beginning of building a number sentence. You can then, of course, have the children take one away themselves and start counting so that this turns into more of an independent task. Be sure that when you do this, you don't always take the one at the end. Definitely do the one at the end when you start doing this task. But as children get a little bit more confident, take one away from the middle and see if they can still understand that the method stays the same. So once we've moved on from one less, we can start looking at two less and taking more away than just one. We do this in exactly the same way as we did one less, making sure that we get the child to count how many resources are left once we've taken some items away. So just to mix things up a little bit, I'm going to use slightly different resources this time. I'm going to use my little ducks that you may have seen in previous videos. So of course I could start off by saying that I have four ducks in my pond and one duck decides to swim away. How many have I got left in my pond? And I would count one, two, three. There are three ducks left in my pond. Of course then I could also do something like this. I have four ducks in my pond but these two ducks decided to swim away together to go to another pond. How many ducks are left in my pond? One, two. There are two ducks left in my pond. Once the child has got used to that kind of method and that kind of language, you can then start talking to them about the entire equation. So, we had four ducks, but when we took away two ducks, 
we had two ducks left. If you want to make this even trickier because you feel that your child has really got to grips with addition and subtraction, you can start merging the two. So you can say that you had four ducks in the pond, you took two away, and there were two left. So that must mean that two add two equals four. Remember, that is definitely an extension task and not something that you should expect a child to be able to do straight away. If children are finding this particularly tricky, I always find that it's helpful to make up a story. So I have four little ducklings and they are all swimming in a pond together. You might even want to draw a pond if a child's finding it hard to visualise. They are all playing together and splashing around. But when it gets to dinner time, these two ducks have to go home for their dinner. So they swim away and go home. How many ducks have we got left playing in the pond? That can just help to contextualise things a little bit and really help a child to visualise what is going on. Of course, you can adjust the quantities so you can say that there are four ducks in my pond. Three ducks went home. How many ducks are left in the pond? You could even say, there are four ducks in my pond and at dinner time they all had to swim home. How many ducks are left in the pond? Zero ducks are left in the pond. It really is all about repetition at this age, which I know I say in a lot of videos, but it's true. And making sure that you use the environment around you to help support children in their learning. And so those were just a couple of examples of how you can help your child with subtraction at home. If you liked this video and found it useful, please let me know in the comments below and by giving this video a thumbs up. It's such a small thing, but it really helps out my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are already a subscriber, make sure that you have hit that little bell icon to make sure you get a notification every time I post a new video so you never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.